Devin with the Cage Rage Podcast. So the UFC is going to be in Greenville, South Carolina this weekend with a headline between fight between Hanada Moicano and the Korean Zombie. Bellator is going to be over in the UK for Bellator London, headlined by what is, I think, a very good middleweight title bout between the great and dramatically underrated in MMA history, Gegard Mousasi, against a very high-level, world-class Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, Rafael Lovato Jr. And this is a good middleweight title fight for Bellator. I think Mousasi, easily one of the most underrated fighters in, in MMA history, Still to this day, I believe he's a top five middleweight, even outside the UFC. I think that he would be a if there was ever a crossover fight, which will never probably never happen between Bellator and the UFC. It would probably be for me at this exact moment if I had to plan one in the next eight months. It would be Musasi if he gets through Lovato against the winner of Adesanya and Whitaker. I think either one of those fights would be amazing. I, Musasi has been around for years has fought in pretty much every organization and been successful in all of them. And here he is, the champion at uh, middleweight in Bellator. Coming into this fight, when we look at Gegard's resume, just to brag on him a little bit before I talk about the challenger, we got Musasi, still only 33 years old, 45-6-2 in his MMA career. Been uh, been around for years. He was born in Tehran, uh, uh, Tehran, Iran, but he's on a great winning streak right now. Um, he's won eight fights in a row, I believe, coming off uh, a big win over uh, Roy McDonald, where he just crushed Roy McDonald. Roy McDonald tried to go up, become a two division champion in Bellator, didn't turn out good for him. Um, he beat Rafael Carvalho and Alexander Slameko so far in. Um, in Bellator, and before that, he was on a great run in the UFC, defeating guys like Chris Weidman, Uriah Hall, Vitor Belfort, Tiago Santos, who's getting ready to fight John Jones, and Tallis Latis. And he's also got wins over guys like Dan Henderson and Marco Munoz. And he he's just been he's been around for a very long time, and has been a top ranked guy worldwide and known as a legit. Uh, world-class fighter for several years so Gegard Mousasi I think I, I would probably put him as the best fighter in Bellator at this moment him or Pitbull Bader's right there but Mousasi's just a really different level but when we look at Lovato Jr. he is he is older than um, Mousasi but he's actually technically the up-and-comer uh, 9-0 35 years old um, high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner, undefeated in the UFC, as I mentioned. He's uh, he's pulled together five wins already inside of Bellator, and here he's coming in. Um, he's got good wrestling, which, uh, you know, if there's one thing about Musasi, is he has been taken down in the past. Um, and he's got phenomenal Jiu Jitsu. He's definitely going to be better on the mat. I, um, I definitely see Musasi playing this fight at range, sticking to his jab, sticking to his inside leg kicks, which are lightning fast. His jab's lightning fast. And playing this fight smart, he's got incredible high fight IQ, a lot of experience. But Lovato could make this ugly, get it to the fight, get it to the ground, and it would be uh, definitely an interesting, uh, interesting fight from that point on. Co-main event of the night. It is a fight between two guys I don't believe are going to be necessarily competing for the Bellator welterweight title anytime soon. But I do believe that this could possibly be the most entertaining fight of the night between Paul Daly and Eric Silva. Both these guys really don't need any introduction to anybody who has followed MMA for a while and knows these guys. Both these guys enjoy a good fist fight. They're going to get in there. They're going to throw with each other. They're going to mix it up. Um, it's good. I I definitely think that this is going to probably be an action-packed fight. Good good fight to throw in as the co-main event. Eric Silva, former UFC fighter, got cut, went on. Well, I think he fought in the LFA at one point, but now he's in Bellator. And um, Paul Daly coming off a hard, very razor-close loss to Michael Venom Page, and a very highly touted fight. Um, 
just earlier this year, and he's had some of the most dramatic, amazing knockouts in that, that Bellator scene. So he's still relevant for sure. Simtex is always dangerous with both with his elbows, with his punches, with his kicks, with his knees. You know, he's he's a great fighter. This is going to be an action-packed fight, so I think this is exciting. And then also on this card, we got the return of James Gallagher, who 8-1, and one, 22 years old, but the, probably the most notable thing about him is he's another young, brash, cocky, Irish bad boy. And he comes from Ch Kavanaugh, McGregor, that whole clan over there in Ireland. And he's got a lot of personality. I think that's a good thing. And, he's, and he backs it up. He's a good fighter. Um, he got a lot of criticism after, uh, you know, Ricky Ban uh, Bandeas knocked him out in the first round with a head kick and uh, finished him off. And, you know, people wanted to write him off and, you know, say he's all hype and I, I, you know, I, I don't know if anybody really believes that a 22 year old talented kid. It's just more, you know, you talk the talk, you know, be, be prepared to face some criticisms when things go wrong. But he's coming back in this fight. I, um, I really do like the way he's being brought up a little bit better than the way Aaron Pico is. Aaron Pico's and him are both have a lot of hype behind them. Young guys. Pico's being thrown in there with killers. Gallagher's been thrown in there with some good fighters, but I think they just pumped the brakes a little bit on both these guys because I think with both Pico and especially with Gallagher, with that personality, we could definitely see a star in the making in the future. And I'm not even going to cover Melvin Manhoff um, just because, you know, I, I, I just, I'm no longer super interested in, you know, the older these older guys going into Bellator. I mean, Bellator's got to get away from that model. I'm so much more interested in them being a young promotion. They can be a young promotion and still have top-level champions like Musashi and Bader and Pitbull and uh, Horiguchi now and Rory McDonald. Um, but they, they need to start... I've been saying it forever that they need to develop more in-house talent. And that that gets me more excited, which is why I'm gonna the, the last fight I'm gonna cover, the last person I want to profile for this card is Fabian Edwards, the younger brother of welterweight contender Leon Edwards, who's on I believe a seven fight win streak in welterweight um, in the UFC, has wins over guys like Gunnar Nelson and Donald Cerrone, and it just got signed to a fight in San Antonio later this year against Rafael Dos Anjos. So he might end up getting it. If he wins that, it'll be his eighth fight that he's won in the UFC in a stat, the, probably one of the more stacked divisions, and he'll probably be a top five ranked opponent. This is his younger brother, 7-0, and and he's a middleweight, 26 years old, and he's coming in here already with a couple wins in Bellator. A lot of hype behind this kid. He's another British kid. He's going to be fighting in his home country. I believe that he is somebody that people should really get to know. Um, he's really good, just like his brother. Uh, both the Edwards boys, Leon and Fabian. Fabian could end up being a Bellator champion, I believe. And Leon could be one of the top contenders at what I believe right now is the most stacked division in in the world is the welterweight division. I think it's surpassed lightweight at this point when you consider Camaro, Woodley, Covington, RDA, Ponzanibio, Leon Edwards. Um, the list just goes on and on at that division. And then when you look over at Bellator, you've got guys like Douglas Lima and Rory McDonald and Michael Venom Page and uh, Koreshkov. So... A lot of great talent at that at that division in welterweight, and his older brothers Leon on a great run. You know they train together. Fabian's got a lot of hype. Um, probably the prospect of the week for CRP is Fabian Edwards. Stay tuned to the, to Bellator London this weekend. It's going to be I think on tape delay on the zone for whatever reason. But uh, this has been Devin with a CRP minute. We'll keep you updated on the results.